Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for the Regional Transportation Committee meeting of Tuesday, March 16th. I'm going to call the meeting to order because we now have a quorum and that will take us to our public comment period. I will open the phone lines and unmute everyone for just a moment. If any members of the public would care to comment, we'd love to hear what you have to tell us. And so at this time, I will unmute everyone and ask if there are any comments. All right, seeing none, I'll remute folks. <clears throat> and that'll take us to the February 16th, 2021 meeting summary. Are there any comments or corrections on the meeting summary? You can raise your hand if you have a comment. All right, seeing none, we'll accept the RTC meeting summary from February 16th, it's attachment A in your packet. That brings us to our, our only action item today, which is Urban Arterial Multimodal Safety Improvement Program, Safer Main Streets Project Awards, round 1.5. I'm gonna turn it over to our director, Ron Papstorf, for a presentation. Ron? And it'll just take me one second to unmute you. Here we go. Thank you, you Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair, sorry, my. I was waiting till I could unmute myself. Uh, let's see. So I want to get to the presentation. Just one moment. Madam Chair, can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ron Papstor from the Director of Transportation Planning and Operations. Um, joined with CDOT staff, I think Rebecca White is on the call, so I'll hand part of this presentation off to Rebecca, but um, wanted to, uh, we're pleased to bring back uh, recommendations from what we're calling Phase 1.5 of the Safer Main Streets program uh, to the RTC and ultimately to the board for approval. So just by way of quick background and reminder, um, the Safer Main Streets program uh, is a joint venture between CDOT and Dr. Cog. Uh, between the two agencies, uh, we had a total of about $77 million available to allocate to projects to reduce fatal and serious injury crashes around the region uh, to, to uh, improve our accommodation of all travel modes, improve, improve transit access, um, support the development of connected and connected urban and employment centers around the region, improve our multimodal corridors, uh, provide safe access, and help communities adjust to new travel patterns caused by COVID-19. Uh, we opened the project solicit the grant um, solicitation uh, process in July of 2020. Um, that application period was open until the middle of August of last year. We received 46 applications requesting $123 million uh, for the available $77 million. Um, through our review process, the review panel uh, made up of CDOT and Dr. Cog staff, um, the Dr. Cog board on December 16th of last year awarded the first $58.9 million uh, for full or partial funding to 30 projects uh, across the region. Uh, accommodating nine jurisdictions. Um, CDOT and Dr. Cog at that time agreed to a phase 1.5 process to work with those uh, partially successful and unsuccessful applications applicants uh, to see if we could uh, award the remaining uh, available funds. Um, just a quick summary of that round one award there. Uh, again, uh, the end of the day had about $18 million available for this round 1.5, um, showing the award amount for each of the pro each of those um, 30 projects around the region. Um, with that, if Rebecca's ready, I can hand off to Rebecca to talk through the 1.5. Sorry about that, Ron. I accidentally muted you and your hand off to Rebecca. So we will turn it over to Rebecca White from CDOT. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, members of RTC. Can um, Chair, can you confirm you can hear me? We can hear you. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks, Ron, for the handoff. Um, so the phase uh, 1.5 process is outlined pretty well here on the slide. Um, but we began that by issuing a letter to each project um, that either 
um, we'd held back for the first round of funding or only received a partial award. Um, and we offered an opportunity to sit down with the CDOT and Dr. Cog and talk through the project. Um, and then we gave each um, entity a, a sort of a short um, Google form essentially to, to answer a few more questions to help us better understand the project. Uh, eight projects um, went through that process. Um, and then we took all that information and um, considered it again with a sort of joint review by the Dr. Cog and uh, CDOT group. If you go to the next slide, that'll give you kind of a rundown of, of who we worked with. Uh, so Broomfield, a couple projects in Denver, uh, Douglas County, Littleton, Parker, RTD, and Superior. Of these, um, we talked to uh, seven, all seven, the first seven. Um, City of Superior um, did not request a meeting uh, with, with our team. And then the next slide just shows you then where we ended up through this. So of the $18 million that Ron mentioned, uh, we uh, propose here allocating 16.8 million. That leaves uh, about 1.3 on um, remaining. And I'm, I'm guessing the members of the RTC would be curious about the future of those funds. Um, fortunately, the state legislature allocated $30 million for this program um, and its sort of sister revitalizing Main Streets to go statewide. Um, so what we would propose to do is include that 1.3 million in that next call, um, but honoring um, the fact that these funds should be spent in the Dr. Cog area, we would um, make sure that that 1.3 million only went to any projects, applications we received in the Dr. Cog area. So it's really nice timing that the legislature has provided this, this 30 million. We're very excited to take this program uh, statewide and and extend um, extend the, the the great benefits I think we can see from this, um, but it also allows us to also see if there are additional projects in the Dr. Cog area through that. And I believe that the final slide here is the recommendation, Ron. If I could hand it back to you for that. Thanks, Rebecca. Yes, um, members of the RTC. So we do have a recommended motion language to award the $16.8 million to the seven projects um, and um, administratively modify the transportation improvement program as part of this action once it's approved by the board. We did get a unanimous um, recommendation from the Transportation Advisory Committee as well. Uh, with that, happy to hand it back to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Papsdorf. So I'm going to ask folks to raise their hand and we can have discussion at this point or I can accept motions to be able to frame the conversation better. The first question or comment is from Karen Stewart. Karen, you should be able to unmute yourself. Thank you, uh, Chair. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Thank you. I'd like to move to approve this recommendation. Thank you. Is there a second on the motion? Go ahead and raise your hand. Thank you, Director Shaw. Yes, I second this motion. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion of the motion? All right, seeing no hands, I will open up to all participants. So everyone, huh, it still says I'm muting you. Hmm. Well, full audio control. All right. Well, I will. Um, Cam, can you help me unmute everyone? It's just not working on my end. Yeah, uh, no problem, Madam Chair. So I will unmute everybody on my end. And they should be able to uh, to talk now, Madam Chair. Great, thank you so much. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. And I'll just ask if there's any opposition, will you raise your hand, please? And I can call on you to ensure that we get it in the record. 
All right, seeing none, the motion passes. Thank you, everyone. That's it for our um, informational briefing, a status update on the 2050 Metro Vision Regional Transportation Plan, which we call the 2050 MVRTP. Jacob Breaker is going to take us through a presentation this morning. And let's see if I can find Jacob's name in the list. Hmm. Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Hi, Jacob. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Jacob Rieger from Dr. Cog's staff. Let me get the presentation up here. Looks great. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. Great. So you can hear me and see my screen? Yes, we can. Great. Okay. So we wanted to give everyone an update on the draft 2050 MetroVision Regional Transportation Plan. Uh, we released a draft for uh, regional public and stakeholder review back in February. We're actually having a public uh, hearing in front of the Dr. Cog board uh, tomorrow evening. So wanted to kind of catch you all up to uh, what's in the plan and what's the process forward for adoption. Um, and I'll be doing this presentation with my colleague Alvin Vidal Sanchez. Um, so first, as I said, we did release the plan back in mid-February. We built a public engagement site. Uh, particularly in this time of COVID, to give people as many opportunities as possible to engage with the plan um, at their level of comfort. Um, so for folks who are gluttons for punishment and wanted to read the entire plan, um, that's four chapters and about 180 pages and 19 appendices, they could do that. Uh, but there are other ways if people just wanted to read certain parts of the plan. Um, there's, um, as it says, online surveys and discussion boards. There's an interactive project map. Um, so a lot of different ways that people can gain uh, entree into, uh, into engaging with the plan. Um, we've also done a lot of activities over the last 30 days, trying to get out there as much as possible. Um, I suspect <laughs> actually many of you have already seen this presentation. So while I apologize for the repetition, that's actually a little bit the point. Uh, we wanted to get out to as many, uh, as many folks and as many groups as possible. We also had uh, three virtual public meetings uh, back in late February and early March. Um, and I think between the three of those together, we had almost 100 attendees. Uh, we've also been doing some interactive polling, uh, some Mentimeter polling in every group we've been going to, and we'll aggregate those results. So anyway, just a lot of different, uh, we're really trying to get out there, especially in COVID, uh, and give people a chance to give us their feedback. Um, as I said, public comment is due at the end of the day tomorrow, um, because we'll be having a public hearing, which will end the public comment period uh, in front of the Dr. Cog board tomorrow evening. So just a little bit of background. Um, I don't need to tell you all how much the region has been growing um, over the last 30 years, and we're still expecting that growth over the next 30 years, although the rate of growth will be just a little bit slower. Um, however, between now and 2050, we're still forecasting that we'll add about a million people to this region. Uh, so we'll be at about 4.4 million people by 2050 in the Dr. Cog region. Um, just a little bit on our background here. Um, it feels like a lifetime ago, pre-COVID, we actually kicked off our planning process for the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan back in the summer of 2019. Uh, by the time the Dr. Cog Board adopts the plan and our federal partners uh, review and approve the plan, it will be a two-year planning process uh, that we've divided up into four phases. We've had a lot of public and stakeholder and board and committee engagement through each of those four phases. Um, and you can see at the bottom right of, of this slide, just a snapshot of some of those engagement activities that we've undertaken uh, over the last two years. Obviously, we're in the fourth phase now where you see the big green arrow, having the draft plan out, uh, finalizing the plan and going towards an adoption uh, timeline. So uh, what have we heard over the last kind of year and a half or so? You know, hard to summarize, um, hard to summarize input received into a single slide. Um, but so far, what we've heard from public engagement, a few themes have popped out. We've definitely heard a lot of support uh, for transit, um, biking, walking, and safety uh, types of projects and types of mobility uh, from the public who has chosen to comment. We have heard less support for new roadways and more lanes, um, but we've also heard a lot of support for, you know, a real emphasis on multimodal, um, multimodal transportation, multimodal options for people to get around. Uh, we've also heard some strong support for maintaining our transportation system and particularly, you know, needing to balance that with the growth that we just talked about is going to continue to occur in this region. Um, and also uh, strong support from the public for reducing greenhouse gas emissions uh, and vehicle miles traveled in our region. Um, again, you see some of the techniques that we used uh, both pre-COVID and particularly post-COVID uh, to engage with folks across the region. 
Um, as I said, we've also, you know, not just the public, but also tried to have robust engagement with our stakeholders across the region during the planning process. Um, again, hard to summarize in a single slide everything we've heard from stakeholders, but again, some themes have popped out. Um, multimodal projects with regional benefit has been a strong theme from stakeholders, and I think that matches well from what we've heard from the public. Um, if you'll recall, um, we use the county transportation forums as our primary method, along with working with our agency partners uh, to solicit and evaluate uh, candidate projects. So, you know, really respecting the county forums, candidate project rankings for the forums that chose to do that uh, was a strong theme that we heard at that point of the process. Obviously, geographic balance and equity um, across the region is really important. And also that same thing of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and the work that's uh, going on now to implement House Bill 1261, Colorado's Climate Action Plan. Um, again, just noting when I say stakeholders, you see that on the screen, um, our county transportation forums, our local governments, um, our agency partnerships with CDOT and RTD, um, and particularly given the audience here for RTC, I will say that that partnership was really strong, particularly when we were at the point last summer and fall of soliciting and evaluating uh, and choosing the candidate projects that ended up becoming part of the fiscally constrained 2050 Regional Transportation Plan. Uh, we did that in partnership with CDOT and RTD. That partnership was really strong. There was a point where we were meeting really almost weekly um, with staff to be able to do that. And so we really appreciate uh, that partnership that helped get us to this point. So what's included in the plan, I'm not gonna rattle off all these bullet points to you. Really the point here is, as I said, um, this is a large plan. We really focus, hopefully you've had a chance to look at it, um, but we really focused on producing a plan that was visually engaging, uh, really inviting for people to sort of pick it up and, and be as interested in as possible as you can be in a plan of a, you know, a 30 year long range transportation plan. Um, so all that visual sort of engagement made the plan just a little bit longer, um, but it really is an easy read um, I think it's an interesting read for people to kind of go through it, uh, but there's a lot of information. You all know how complex our region's multimodal transportation system is, um, and there's a lot of things that we want to talk about and need to talk about in this plan. So really the point here is that between the plan document itself and all those appendices, chances are if there's a particular issue, issue that someone's interested in, um, they would be able to find it within the draft plan document. So just a little bit on funding as well in the plan, uh, lots of ways to slice and dice um, the financial plan that's included as part of the overall regional transportation plan. Um, again, the first point I'll make here is just, again, that notion of partnership, uh, particularly between the three agencies, Dr. Cog, CDOT, and RTD. Uh, this is a financial plan that we all work together on um, and includes all of that input in terms of all of the revenues and all of the expenditures um, that affect our region's transportation system. So whether that's federal, state, local revenues, uh, whether it's state or federal, state, and local expenditures, it's all included within the 2050 plan. So just real quickly here on just some quick numbers, um, the, the top right chart shows the revenues available for use in the plan, and it shows those funds by kind of the agency that administers them. So the three big agencies, as well as other uh, regional system funds and then non-regional system funds, which is actually a big chunk of what's in the plan, and that's really local government um, expenditures on their portion of the transportation system. And then at the bottom, we're showing the regional agency's investment profile. So this is just to give you a sense of, you know, this is a really sort of big simplification of, of a lot more detail in the financial plan, but really looking at it between, you know, between capital projects and sort of everything else, operation, maintenance, and ongoing costs um, that are part of the transportation system uh, to give you that breakdown between those two categories between the three agencies. And then kind of one more way to look at these numbers, this just gives you a sense of dollars by some of the major thematic elements in the plan. Um, the things that you see here are really sort of the way that the plan is organized around the themes that we've heard. Um, and so this gives you a sense of dollars dedicated towards, um, towards, those, um, towards those types of projects and towards those themes in the plan. One thing I'll note, if you add up all of the dollars together, the entire plan is about $132 billion um, over 30 years. Again, that's all inclusive um, of everything that it takes to operate, maintain, expand, and improve our multimodal transportation system. So you can see in particular about 8.2 million, or excuse me, 8.2 billion um, is actually for projects. A lot of the remainder of the plan is actually for operations and maintenance, state of good repair, um, and the other thing it takes, all the other things it takes to keep our transportation system running. So with that kind of quick overview, I now want to turn it over to my colleague, Alvin Vidal Sanchez, who will talk about some of the highlights of what's actually in the draft 2050 plan. Alvin? 
Thanks, Jacob. So using the engagement and what we heard from our public and our stakeholder engagement, we've actually organized the plan into these six priorities. So safety, air quality, regional transit, active transportation, freight, and multimodal mobility. I'm gonna go into each of these on a couple more slides, but uh, throughout the plan, we tried to tag information that was related to each of these. So in addition to organizing information, we also organized our plans investments according to the six priorities, and these match those you had just seen from a slide earlier on Jacobs. So I'll start with safety. Uh, this was a priority we've heard consistently from our member governments and also from our public engagement. Uh, in terms of what you're going to be seeing on these slides, it's really a roll-up, a high-level roll-up of information we show in the plan. So current conditions, uh, the investments and the projects we're including in the plan that are specifically safety, and then what are our potential outcomes and performance measures we're looking at in terms of this topic. So in the RTP, we're investing 465 million towards safety specific improvements. Like Jacob mentioned, we do want projects that have a regional benefit and have a lot of different benefits to, to them. But we also did a specific call to our local project sponsors for safety specific projects, just to reflect the importance we heard from stakeholders and public for these types of improvements. Uh, of that 465 million, uh, 313 is going to 11 projects, and then the remainder is what we're calling uh, programmatic elements. So 152 is going to a safety program. So similar to the CEDA and Dr. Cog initiative of the Safer Main Streets program. Uh, however, that evolves over the next 30 years, um, making sure that we're providing some level of investment for projects. We're not sure what they are right now, but we do want to show some investment in safety projects. In terms of active transportation, again, it's a roll-up of current conditions, some opportunities in the region. So uh, looking at the uh, percentage of trips in the region that we call short trips, trips less than three miles, trips less than a mile, and trying to capture some of those people that identify as interested in bicycling but are concerned. So continuing to build out a regional active transportation network, a high comfort active transportation network. Uh, again, these are a snapshot of projects, uh, primarily regional trails. There's $180 million going towards active transportation projects, and 31 million of that is uh, set aside similar to what we just mentioned on our safety slide. So we don't know what these projects could be, but we do know we want to continue to make some investment in bicycle and pedestrian improvements over the next 30 years. Air quality is a unique topic since we don't show specific air quality projects, uh, projects that increase transit ridership, uh, get people off out of their vehicles and using the trail network or the electrification of vehicles and vehicle fleets help our air quality. Um, this is where you start seeing some of the modeling that we do. So we do uh, expect with the 2050 RTP, uh, there is a reduction per capita greenhouse gas emissions. And then also tied to this is the air quality modeling we do as part of our requirements to show. Multimodal mobility is tied to that concept of making sure all the projects we're including in the plan are multimodal in nature, especially our road projects. So making sure that there are choices for folk to be able to bike, walk, or roll in addition to the road projects we're including. Um, the list of projects you see on the slide as well as in the plan are a mixture of interstate, state highway, or just regional connector roads. Um, we do expect there through our modeling to be fewer driver trips by 2050 without, compared to 2050 without the RTP, as well as an improvement in congested vehicle travel. And ultimately, if you were to add up all of the different projects that, under this theme, you're looking at about 7.5 billion across 68 projects. Freight was a, an important topic we heard, especially from our stakeholders. We know that trucks carry over 90% of goods in the region by tonnage. So we wanted to make sure that, that we were showing some investment in freight specific projects. So similar to safety and active transportation, these are freight specific projects that we asked from our local governments. There's 220 million being invested in these types of projects. That, that goes to four projects that you can see listed. And then similar to the other two areas, a set aside specific for improvements that we're not sure of what they could be yet, but we do wanna make some continued investment. And with these investments, we do um, expect fewer vehicle hours of delay. And then the last topic we'll discuss is regional transit. Uh, if you were to add up all of our transit projects, it's about 2.7 billion. Uh, that includes everything from regional mobility hubs to the Northwest Rail Peak Period Service Plan, starting to build out a regional BRT network based on RTD's BRT feasibility study. 
uh, as well as some conceptual corridor transit projects that we received from our local project sponsors that we they are aware they would like transit components at some point in the future on their on those corridors but we're not entirely sure what those look like now so including some investment for these conceptual projects across the region as part of that we're also making sure that uh, we're looking at our impact of these investments on our low income and our communities of color so um, we do some analysis making sure looking at what access to jobs through public transit is for the region as a whole but especially our uh, vulnerable population so low income and communities of color and then with that if there are any questions uh, jacob and i are happy to take them thank you so much jacob and alvin that is a tremendous amount of work and you've put it together in such a nice way for us to be able to understand it this morning um, so looking i'm now looking forward to 2050 it looks like it's going to be a bright future do any members have questions or comments they'd like to make this morning? Go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to make a comment or have a question. All right, our first commenter is from Shelly Cook, Director Cook. Hi, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. It's Shelly Cook from RTD. I'm uh, new to this process, so uh, forgive me for probably a basic question. With so much that's um, underway, we're resuming, reimagine. Uh, the accountability committee is generating some good thinking, uh, the possibility of uh, federal funding that hadn't been anticipated. Is there flexibility in the plan as those things come through or hopefully come through? Great question. Jacob, could you take that for us? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Director Cook. So the short answer is yes, there is some flexibility. Uh, the slightly longer answer is that um, what you're seeing today is the major update to the plan that we do every four years. In between those four-year updates, we do amend the plan as needed. One of the things that we've actually talked about in the plan in Chapter 3 is that um, there are two things, at least two things, that we think will trigger future amendments to the plan once they fully play out. One of them is what you just mentioned, which is the reimagined process. Once that's complete and the outcomes of, of that work and related work, um, we've acknowledged in this plan document that we may need to amend the plan to fully reflect that. And the other is the ongoing implementation of House Bill 1261 again Colorado's climate action plan once that is fully implemented that may as well uh, trigger some amendments to the plan so yes there are those opportunities as needed okay thank you thank you any other questions or comments this morning all right seeing that I just really like to thank staff again for the tremendous effort that's gone into this at this point and they did mention in the presentation just how much effort was put into the visual um, appeal of the plan. And so if you haven't had a chance, you should take a look because it's um, it's a beautiful plan and it makes it a lot more accessible to many more people. So I wanna thank you all for making sure as many people can understand and read the content as possible. Thank you so much. So that takes us to um, administrative items, member comments and other matters by members. I'll just start off by thanking everyone for their patience over the last year as we've been virtual in these meetings. We're all looking forward to getting back together in person so we can network and see each other and have great conversation. But for now, we'll, we'll continue here. Are there any other matters by members? All right, seeing that our next meeting is April 20th, 2021. And with that, we are adjourned. Have a great day.